Okay, well, uh, colleagues, uh, as I think you know, uh, a meeting has just taken place of all the TUC's public service unions, 24 uh, of our affiliates, and that follows on from the debate which you heard this morning at our Congress that demonstrated uh, total unity amongst the, uh, the unions, uh, and it also demonstrated a huge frustration at the failure to make progress in the negotiations. The government have uh, told us of their determination to impose hugely damaging changes, to impose increases in contributions, to uh, continue with the change in indexation which reduces the value of pensions. And on these key issues, we've been unable to engage the government in meaningful negotiations. Now, what was also evident this morning and again in the discussions we've just had was an absolute determination to stick with those negotiations and to continue to seek uh, in every possible way uh, if we can establish uh, an agreement through those negotiations. But also, of course, today we've talked about uh, what other decisions need to be made if that settlement isn't achieved. Now you'll know that on uh, June the 30th, four of our affiliated unions took industrial action. Uh, as some colleagues reported in the debate this morning, uh, ten other unions have now uh, reported on decisions to move towards ballots for uh, industrial action. Uh, and uh, this afternoon we discussed the uh, way in which unions wanted to work together to take this campaign forward. And a unanimous decision was reached uh, to hold a day of action on November the 30th. Now on that day, some unions will be asking members to take industrial action. Others might want to show support in other ways, through lunchtime meetings and rallies and events that bring public service workers together with their communities in a united call for fairness. And undoubtedly this will be, uh, if we don't achieve a settlement to avert this, this will be the biggest trade union mobilisation for a generation. And further consideration is being given to what other actions might be appropriate beyond that day of action if a settlement isn't secured. Now, as I emphasised in the debate this morning, uh, I and all of our unions most certainly do not take this step lightly, and we remain absolutely committed to seeking to resolve this through genuine negotiations. But for that to succeed, we need the government to take a new approach to bring new proposals to the table, to engage in a genuine spirit of seeking agreement. Uh, we'll be trying to achieve that. We'll be meeting the government to continue the talks with them next week. But if those talks don't make progress, then we'll see that day of action on November the 13th. So, okay, I'm happy to take questions. Mr. Barber, John Craig from Sky News. Um, you just said 10 other unions. Can you confirm for us, please, how many unions are now having ballots and are likely to take part in some form of action? And how many workers altogether, that's the total, of workers who are going to be balloting? Uh, four unions, as you know, uh, took industrial action on June the 30th, having conducted their ballots and secured a mandate from their members. Uh, we are aware at the moment of 10 other unions many of whom spoke in the debate this morning, that have now confirmed their intention to move to balance. Uh, those unions represent millions of workers, but decisions they have to make decisions on which groups of workers uh, will be balloted. Some of the general unions that have members in the private sector as well as the public sector, for example, will not be balloting all of their members, I don't expect, simply those affected by the government's pensions proposal. So, the exact number of workers balloted for action, at this stage I'm not able to confirm, but uh, it's an awful lot of people from every part of the public service workforce, uh, 
Uh, and as I say, I think this will be the biggest mobilisation by the trade union movement in a generation. Mr. Clark, Ben Wright, BBC. If, even Ed Miliband doesn't support your move towards strikes. Why on earth should the public have any sympathy for your campaign or public sector pensions when theirs and the private sector are often much worse than yours? And specifically, what do you want the government to move on uh, in negotiations? Clearly, a big sticking point is this contribution increase coming in next year. Is that what they have to come up with a better offer for for these strikes to be averted? Uh, well, I'm not going to negotiate through the media, as you wouldn't expect, there are a, a range of critical issues involved in these negotiations, including the issue of contributions, uh, of course, including this decision that they made on the indexation, which has reduced the value of pensions. Uh, but a whole range of other issues, too, arise from John Hutton's report with recommendations for changes in the shape of the pension schemes uh, and the terms of the pension schemes. So, there are a mix of issues that are all part of the negotiations. I don't want to single out one simple issue in quite that, uh, that way. Will we carry public support? Yes, I'm absolutely confident we will carry public support. And I think the attempt to divide public service workers from the rest of the community suggests that somehow they're leeching off the rest of the community uh, with cosseted, gold-plated pensions arrangements. I don't think that's a picture that the wider public actually believe or recognise. And if I was a private sector worker thinking about the prospects for my pension arrangements, are my pension arrangements likely to be more secure in the future? Am I going to have a, a chance of a better chance of having a decent pension if the arrangements in the public sector are dragged down even more? Absolutely not. So Yes, we'll be making our case to the wider public, of course, and I'm confident that already we're winning those arguments as we comprehensively did, for example, in some of the discussions about the long-term affordability of the arrangements. Mr Barber, Channel 4 News, Francis Moore today was showing absolutely no sign of moving on this or any sign of compromise. So do you have any optimism that next week at your meeting you will be able to make any move forward? Well, I've not seen what uh, Mr. Maud's been saying today, um, uh, and if that is the case, then I very much regret that, because, uh, as I emphasised, we approach these discussions in a genuine attempt to try to reach a reasonable, fair settlement. Uh, but it does take two parties in a negotiation that have to be committed in that same spirit to have a chance of making progress. And if uh, the ministers are still indicating that they are going to take an intransigent approach, unwilling to reconsider their position on these key issues, which are fundamental to the future value of pensions of millions of public service workers, uh, then that's uh, putting us on a collision course. But that's their decision, not ours, if that's the choice they make. Okay, well if there are no other questions, thank you for staying this afternoon and uh, we'll talk more in due course I'm sure.